Hey guys, welcome to the next commercial breakdown. Now this one's on a spot we did for Molson Chorus. It was an interactive music video and uh, yeah, it was a huge job, over 126 VFX shots. Um, a big team of people worked on this. Um, credits will be on the page and uh, also a link to the interactive site and um, the final spot as well so you can check it out. So. I'm just going to jump into the main timeline. Um, so if I just frame this up, you see it was a pretty big timeline. Um, and this was a combo of both flame and um, uh, some nuke compers as well. Um, for this workflow, we used um, the, uh, the new version in extension 3, which is um, if you select you know, your clips in the timeline and you do the back click and go media source versions, and um, you can go straight to the select latest version, which was a big uh, time saver. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump into one of the shots and um, show you uh, how some of these were built. So I'm just going to scrub maybe to this one. So this was um, this was a fun shot. This one. Uh, let's uh, let's jump in. Give it a second, and there we go. All right. So it's going to zoom in all the way back to the source, and you see this is actually uh, not the source. So I go into this batch effects and then frame it up. You see this is, um, now this is our source. So you see we were referencing the R3Ds, um, sorry, the RA RAWs. Um, glad it wasn't red personally. Um, and yeah, so we were linking to these. Um, and all the cleanup was then done, if we look to the plate. And obviously that was um, then added just to uh, speed things up. Um, if we go along here, let's go to Alt 2 and then just zoom this guy over. And again, the other thing to note is this uh, recording is going to be slightly clipped at the bottom just because I'm using the uh, SDI app from my uh, monitor. So this is just all of the layering of all the keys of all the girls. Um, for the most part, I was able to get away with keys, um, uh, even though they weren't, like, um, like you remember, uh, shot on green for the bottom. So we got away with a bit. Um, obviously, there was a bit of paint involved. Um, now if we move further down, so we made a mat just for him um, and that'll make sense in a second because we actually built a projection uh, scene for this actual comp. So if I go along over to the left, this is where all the, the color works kind of starts um, once they're in comp. So this first one was just for, um, if I go F1 at 4, it was their skin tones and then we did some desatching. So these are won't make sense right now, but there's some desatch going on here, so it all kind of trickles down. Um, this one was for the overall brightness of their uh, their dresses. Um, if I go on through, you see this is again, this is where we kind of set the look further down, introduce a little bit more brightness, and then again, just kind of balanced out some of these people based off where they were on set. Same with this girl here, so you can see we just kind of helped sit them in a bit better. So. And we had our good old friend pixel spread, and we look at the results and go along here. I'll ignore that mess for one second. Let's go Alt-1. If we go down here, here is our actual source. Um, so this is our 3D uh, scene that we used to project further down here. Again, we did some little helpers for the, where the reflections were because that was obviously a challenge putting those back in and the contact shadows. And if we just go all the way across and look at this first comp, this is actually where, once it updates, this is where the reflections actually first go in. Um, so we do a pre-projection and um, I'll just show you how those were built. So we just separated each of the elements with the girls and then it was fed into a 2D transform and they were they were flipped, which is you know a little bit easier because they were static, which really helped. So F1, F4, you can see what we're doing. And then um, it was literally, they were then fed into a bump displace, so using, um, using the raw reflection um, as the displacement map from, from V-Ray, we were then um, just, just helped get it to where personally I felt looked, looked right. And then we did the same for the, for the alpha and then just kind of tapered them off and blurred them in. And what we ended up using for the blend modes for these guys was uh, min darken. So each of them had slightly different opacities for all these guys. Um, obviously, they needed to kind of taper off. So then the next step was 
we just kind of blurred them back a little just to kiss them in and again we step through there's some other little kisses of highlights and specular and so on and so forth so forth depth of field was the next little guy um, that helped sell the shot again um, now the next step was the main comp if I press escape give it a second okay so this is um, if I press F4 uh, that's that error that comes up sometimes, which is fun. If I press preview, it should disappear. There we go. So this is the actual uh, the build of where we, where, we, where we left everything. So if I actually you can see, um, this is all the geo, and uh, this is just diffuse, and it's a, you know, the new diffuse projector. So if I select it and just press H and hide it, and it's not going to let me in. This preview bug's kind of annoying. Uh, there we go. So I pull back. Um, if I hide that and then just again just turn on shading, you can see there's our there's our room. So we've got the geo in here, and I'll just put shading back off and unhide these guys, and press F4. So if I just um, orbit this really quick, you can see there's our little our little uh, scene with them placed in the, the relative space where they should be. Um, I'll just quickly undo. And what we did, if I just quickly turn on play lock. And scrub through you see we've just done a little slight push in and a little bit of a, a dolly up just to give this uh, a little bit of life now the other thing is um obviously we put in some of these contact shadows so if i just undo with play lock give it a second um, and we look over here so each of these had their own contact shadows that we then put back in and uh, how we did those was if i just double click and follow the trail. Um, again, we just added G-Mask specific to where talent was, blurred it up, and then um, we ended up playing with the gain and it just kissed back in what we wanted. And again, each one had its own kind of values specific that we were, we were liking. Um, so out from here is where we kind of uh, obviously kissed some edges together more. So if we go F4 here. So that was, again, just kissing in some extra little bits. Um, we go to this comp. This is some light wrap to help the girls kind of sit in there, and it really helped, especially around their legs. And this was just a test on some shadows. It didn't work. Um, again, there's our regrain, some more color work, just little uh, little tweaks just for all these guys to get them across the line. And then we go to the end. I'll go here, and you see there's our. If I go 100%. There's our final shot. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this, um, this shot turned out. Um, let's uh, jump into another one. So just jump out. Just undo so I don't lose that render. And I'm going to open the main timeline for this. And I'm just going to jump to a shot that I worked on, which is one that actually feels quite nice when you look at it, which is this one. Um, it's going to F drag him out, open him up, and do promote to batch effects. So give it one second. And I'll just frame that up. Okay, so here's our here's our source, and you see there was obviously some tracker marker cleanup and removal to do. Um, but the main thing for this is um, we use the traditional kind of additive keyer technique um, that preserves that's usually good for transparency and motion blur, specifically just for hair. So not in the traditional way that uh, it will be done where you do it and then combine it with a key so let me explain that so you understand that a little bit better so again here's our little there's our cleanup done and what we ended up doing was only using it for the hair parts so everything else that you see was using traditional keying um, where you sometimes sadly have to shrink or do things to edges but the main thing was if we go across um, and I go here and press F4 um, for the actual math for this, um, we did this in the, uh, the linear photo map. So we promoted it all to linear light. Um, I was getting more pleasing results personally. Um, uh, again, your results might vary. Um, and then, so again, the normal technique you've seen, which is uh, only, only uh, touching the green and then subtracting that. Uh, give it one second. Uh, sorry, differencing that from the source and then promoting it to black and white, and then grabbing the background, 
and multiplying it over the background, you see the nice blend we get on the hair. And again, this isn't always you know, the thing if anyone has used this technique. It works great on not darker stuff and not lighter stuff, so mostly gray stuff. Because um, you can see what's happening on, on these guys here is all their highlights are going to crap. Um, and we're getting a lot of contamination from the background on top of him. So um, what we did as well to compensate for this is the background we kind of tweaked to, to help it kiss through what we wanted. Um, so again, if I go back to here, and then this is our, our ad, and go F1, F4, you see that hair is pretty, pretty damn nice. Um, I'll go Alt 2, and put this to linear, and just frame this guy up over here. And you see if we go from uh, the source, uh, the source to there, there's really not much of a difference going on in that hair. Like that's pretty spot on. And we're at, um, I'll go 100% and filtering, take that bad boy off. So if we go here to here, you see we're getting a really nice key. Um, so the next bit is how we added this back together. So I go back to one up. So down here is where, obviously, there's our normal background, and um, then here is our normal traditional key. So I put this back to video. This is where we had to shrink in on edges for certain things. Um, uh, this was, again, our, our little light wrap. If I undo that, uh, I look at this, and I go back to linear. See, this is our basic slap key, um, where his hair looks rubbish. Um, most of this stuff looks pretty bad, but if I go down here and then go F1, F4, you see that's what it was doing to his hair, even with the light wrap, so it wasn't pleasing. So what we ended up doing was um, blending this nice pass because, again, we had all this decontamination stuff, uh, contamination stuff here, and we ended up just tracking a shape around his head, blurring it, and just blending it back in, and you see it just helps kiss in that hair detail. And again, after that, we then had to do a couple little tweaks to skin tones. Um, and this is kind of where we set the look after. And then, you know, final steps of some sharpening chromatic aberration. And that's where he ended up. So I'll do, I'll pull this out and do an A, B. So one and two. So if I go one and view it at 100, two, you see that hair detail is rocking. So I'll go into the next one and I'll just jump out of here. And again, the other thing to note is, yeah, there was so many people that worked on this and uh, it was a miracle that it got done. Um, it, was, it was a very, very big job and everyone put in the biggest effort. So hats off to everyone else that was involved with this. Um, I'm gonna go to a shot that, um, my boss actually worked on, and I can show you just so you can see. It's a quite a nice um, looking shot, so I'm just going to scrub through. And it's this one, which is a nice outdoor altitude party scene. So I'm just going to pull that out, open, and I'm just going to promote to batch. I'll give it a second. Okay, and we're in. Now, this one might be a little bit slower, so. If it does slow down, bear with me. All right, so if I go Alt 2 and just scrub along, and we'll look at the right viewer and put it back to the video. See, so we actually shot these in, because uh, we didn't, obviously, it was kind of like a crowd replication thing. So we shot takes here. And if we go to this one, we shot takes here. Um, again, different takes, different. Uh, crowds mixed up as well that's it um, I made sure we did on set to kind of get as much variation as we could so if I just again all these different crowds and some background people with the green which helped you know some of it was roto some of it was painful some of it wasn't um, most of it was so I'll just let this first comp update and this is the little spider web of these guys and this was the actual FBX that had the camera move, I'm pretty sure. Um, if I go Shift 4, turn on icons, yes. So this is where the camera move would have happened. And I just scrubbed through. Actually, it's going to bog down. 
it was referencing so many. Give it a second. Okay, and we're back. Um, and then after that, so if we go back down here, this was a matte painting projection provided to us. Um, I'm guessing it was done in Nuke, I'm not sure. So it wasn't actually built in here, this one. Um, it's a nice, beautiful uh, matte painting. And then if we swipe to the left, you know, it had depth of field added like you'd expect. And then this is the main comp for shadows for these guys. Give it one second. And it's thinking. Okay, there we go. So again, if I go F1, F4, oh, sorry, F2, F4, so background thingy. So there's a little bit of Atmos added. Um, the crowd sat in there. And, you know, uh, looks pretty good. Um, you know, then the usual stuff, some edge blur, some color, uh, you know, tweaking. If I go further down. Again, just some final little little pings and highlights. Now, uh, again, for this, had to do the old lens flare. Um, and again, that was just added in very selectively. And then we uh, played around with some uh, lens, lens smuck. So just doing the old trick of taking the highlights, blurring them a little, and then uh, grabbing some, some lens dirt and uh, just screening it in so only the highlights will kind of screen through. Um, makes for, especially when the lights animating up and down or on and off, it makes for a nice convincing, um, less clean uh, comp. If I go to the output, there we are. That's, I'll view it 100%. That's where that guy ended up. So I'm just gonna exit out of there and give it a second and we're back. So I'm just gonna throw that one away and that's kind of, um, I guess, as far as a, I mean, we could keep going and going and going for this. I mean, those are uh, kind of key shots that I've, I've felt um, really, uh, I personally, that I worked on that I was uh, most, most proud of. And um, I hope you guys uh, found uh, some of this useful. And, um, you know, hopefully you learned something from it. Um, that's it for this uh, breakdown, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more.